it's an absolute marvel. I mean, I had no idea it was coming. Uh, I could not possibly uh, have predicted it. And I suppose it's just, it, it's sort of overwhelming to think that all of these hit and miss kind of things that you do in your career because you think that they're the right thing to do at that time, but somehow they add up to something that somebody recognizes as, as being helpful in advancing. The 60s, I think in many people's eyes were a tumultuous time. In my view, it was really a very productive, uh, vital uh, period. You were having things like the women's movement, you were having the gays beginning to mobilize uh, themselves, you were having disabled people, there was a kind of a, uh, a society was taking a harder look at itself internally. Um, and so I was very lucky. I started out, I had a part-time job in Bobby Kennedy's Justice Department that graduated into things I did um, in Sarge Shriver's the beginning of the poverty program. So later on I worked as, when the administration changed, I worked as a legal service lawyer, then worked with the beginning of the public interest law firms movement, did a lot of task case litigation on behalf of children, mentally disabled people in the 70s. Uh, went into Carter's administration in the Justice Department from there on to the D.C. Circuit where I worked for 20 years, fascinating uh, 20 years. Um, and after that, I went abroad on the War Crimes Tribunal in Yugoslavia. When I came back from there since then, I've done a variety of things, some government service. I'm currently on the government's uh, oversight board for civil liberties and privacy which looks at the counterterrorism programs and tries to ensure that they adequately protect privacy, civil liberties. Starting way back in the Bobby Kennedy Justice Department, uh, he became interested, I think for the first time in terms of a concentrated interest on the problems of poverty as it intersected in the criminal justice field. And so he, there wasn't really no program, but a friend of mine that I'd worked with in law school uh, was an antitrust lawyer, and Bobby Kennedy took him out of antitrust and said, you set up an office of criminal justice. But there weren't, there weren't slots for people. So my friend called me and said, would you be a part-time consultant? So we worked on the first bail conference, but this was the first time that bail, which had been used as an economic kind of bar for people, even if you know, they were, did not have a lot of evidence against them pending trial, they couldn't afford the bail bond, and so he, you know, Bobby Kennedy's Justice Department, uh, Nick Katzenbach was the Attorney General at the time. They moved right in and, you know, and set up a system that did a lot away with money bail and substituted, you know, release on recognizance, release on... Cut. So it was, it was important to me to see that you could, by working with other people, make changes in basic laws that had existed one way for many, many years. And that, I think, provoked me over into legal services and into the test case litigation um, that we brought in the 70s. It sounds kind of banal, but I'll say it anyway. It is try always to work in a situation that you feel good about, not, not a situation, I got to do this now because, although I recognize the, the impetus of economic woes and periods, but still to try to work in a field or to do things that you can feel good about, even if they don't succeed at the moment. Uh, because I think basically when you look back over mine, you can see that at a certain point somebody said, why would you do that? You know, why would you go there? Why would you drop 20 years you know, on the DC circuit, which is supposedly the second best, second highest court in the, in the country? You know, and go off to a foreign you know, tribunal, uh, et cetera. But when you, when you have a sense that something is right and somebody needs to do something, to the extent you can, uh, follow it. It's, that's that simple, I think. And also, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, if anybody said to me, are there things you regret in your life? I, could, I can give you 100 things I've regretted in my life. But the thing, I think, is, is to take action, to do what you think is right at the moment, and, live with your mistakes.